Okie doke. Wife's tired, taking a little rest, but I gotta get moving on this thing, so hopefully Harrison doesn't get crushed by the mm -hmm. Alright buddy, hey, do you want to watch me put this part in? Yeah. Okay, you're going to sit on the stool though, okay? Yeah, you want to put that? I'm going to put this over here. Why? Because when I put this in, you got to stay on the stool, alright? So you wait on the stool, and I'm going to put a part in. you got to stay there. I want to see the van. Yeah, you get to see the van. And you want to use... I did a wheel right there. There's a wheel right there. Many, I see a wheel. How many wheels do you see? Four. Four? Yeah. That's a lot of wheels. There's a lot of wheels right here. There's a wheel. One, two, three. I've got to count them. You're going to count all of them? One. One. Two. Three. Four. Four. I, I dropped it. I dropped it. You dropped it? Yeah, I dropped it. I need to put it here. Well, stay on the stool. I'll come get it in a second. That's fine. Okay. Can't you? Close. All right. Down on the dowels. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Pull my chain out. What do you do? Well, put the head in. I think. Why? Well, why? What do you mean, why? Because it's how the car goes. Okay. So. For the second time around, same as before, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's the order it goes in. You 15 new well, you finger tight, then 15 newtons, then 60 newtons, then you tighten these on the end, the smaller ones, to 20 newtons, and then you do plus 90 degrees on all the big boys in the middle. And I don't have an E size this big but this 12.916 fits perfect so don't worry about it i'll just time lapse the rest of the torque process <laughs> Should have brought a fancy wrench home, but I didn't, so I'm just going to mark them do 90 degrees. Okay, so with your dots lined up pretty level, right? Just like that. That makes sure that valves that are opening are opening into with a one at TDC. They'll push down into the cylinders they're supposed to instead of impacting each other because you could do a ton of damage. And the manual has you tighten down this one and this one. So number two and number five. This is where we'll be pushing valves open. You can see this one will push open pretty aggressively in the, this set right here. So you're you're pushing on the cam near that. If you did like this one, it would flex it and you were snapping things. Uh, they also want you to go one revolution at a time. Um, that's just to keep things even as it goes down. Really, you watch this cap and if it's sitting flat, you know, there's a gap on both sides instead of pushing one or the other, you're even enough, so. Uh, just takes a while. Okay. 
All right, now we do that number two and number five, one rotation at a time until we hit nine newtons. Um, ideally, they'd all hit at the same time, but they just won't. So I think I'll just do one, two, three, four. And if you do less than a revolution, that doesn't really matter. You pooped? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me you had to poop? You could have pooped in your toilet. It's green, Daddy. It's green? You're not even looking at it. You're guessing. There's a dinosaur in your poop? No. Okay. Somebody pooped. All right, we're all cleaned up from the poop crisis, and we're back. Uh, this side seems to be down a lot further. It's basically flush, so I'm gonna get this side flush one turn at a time. discovered I can put some of his kid shows on there and he doesn't complain about wanting to go inside and I can work on the van until the wife wakes up. Uh, timing change. Probably have to put this to music or something because of the background. But really I just got to pull the chain up and get the two gears in and make sure everything lines up uh, the right way. And once that's in place I'll go ahead and crank this by hand and make sure nothing touches tips. So I've got it where it should be. So, yeah, mommy's inside. But it's lined up with the pin, but it just needs to come up a tiny bit for it to center on the cam, and I don't want to pull it in at the bolts. So I'm going to turn it backwards. <laughs> uh, but just backwards enough that it'll relieve a little bit of tension off of that chain and allow me to move it. I'm not, I'm not going to be pulling with the the slack side of the chain. All I want to do is give it a little bit like that, just a tiny, tiny bit. And that should give me enough wiggle. Yep, now that slides on. Nice, it's tight on this side. We'll put the tension in, get this out of there. Torque these down and then test rotate. All right, final step. See if this thing will do two rotations without anything touching. Uh, pro tip, take your pin out. Last time I kind of crushed it in there. <laughs> There's my dots line back up. Okay. Yeah, nothing touched. I think we're good to go. Uh, I gotta take off in like an hour, so I'm hoping. Well, now I should be able to put. No, I can I put the valve cover on yet? I can always set it on there and keep stuff out of the way. Uh, gotta put stuff on. Right, tied up a bunch of stuff, got a lot of things torqued down that need to be torqued down. So I gotta tighten my fuel lines, hook them up to where they're supposed to be over there. Just, you know, at this point it's one step at a time, work my way around the engine. I'll hook up the turbo, put the front clip on, and then I got a uh, guy at work let me borrow his filling thing. So I'll have to look into whether this, it doesn't look like it has a check valve. Maybe it does. I'll read up on it, but there's different fittings to go on your radiator. You essentially pull a massive vacuum on the whole system, it'll collapse all the hoses and everything, and then you jam the filling end into just a bucket of coolant, and it's supposed to suck it all in with almost no air pockets, so that'll be fun to try out. 
a bunch more stuff attached and I've hit a milestone because the only bag I have left is the one labeled front clip. So that's it. And I don't see any bolts that I forgot to put in. Anyway, well, what's up here? Old head bolts. There's a hose clamp. Yeah. I think I'm on track. Shouldn't be too much longer now. Okie doke. I think I have all the coolant stuff hooked up. So through this guy on top, it's hooked up to the, the siphon. And you just like pick the adapter so we close and tighten this collar. And it really, it's like a, one of those plugs you use for like stopping up your drain to flood test your shower. <laughs> uh, let me get an airline hooked up and see how well this thing works. Well, it sounds obnoxious. Maybe I'll go over and open it. So it's going back in here. Is anything not hooked up? I didn't clamp that. Doesn't seem to be making back here now. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I almost gave myself a heart attack and then realized I'm a dumbass. So, messing with this thing for at least 10 minutes. Can't get vacuum on the system thinking, oh my god, like what if the head's not tightened down flat? What if something got in there? What if there's a crack in the block? Like, oh no. And I never screwed the drain back in on the radiator. So that'll do it. That'll keep it from making vacuum. Let me get that tighter. I also switched to the cone because it goes down below this hole for the vent line for the overflow. So try this one more time. Alright, and there's vacuum, that's more like it. Like it starts sucking the hoses down and everything. Of course, get it right out between 20 and 25. It'd suck if it broke something. And it's supposed to be able to hold this vacuum for two minutes. I figure that's enough time to get everything else ready. It appears to actually be holding it pretty well. So. Wow, cool. This is going to be fun. So I'm going to get the other thing and uh, a bucket of coolant. i got to find a clean bucket. This is kind of cool. Like it had been, it's been drying down a bit. Yeah, I mixed four gallons. Uh, I'm actually supposed to have GO5 in this. I was mistaken using that G48 or whatever it was before, the blue stuff. So GO5 looks like uh, your pee after a night of whiskey. But it's leaking down and I can hear all kinds of noises in this area, right? So I don't know if it's one of these fittings, but considering how swollen this is, I wonder if this block is cracked inside and would cause a small coolant leak. Um, super tempted to find a coupling and just stick these two hoses together and bypass that for now. So I'm not worried about having that aux heater work. I might take the one out of that van and see if it doesn't leak, but I suspect that, because I can hear the noise, that in here there's actually a leak. So actually, there was a bunch of the coolant down in there. It doesn't appear to be leaking, but I bet because of the vacuum, it was actually boiling. So that was the noise I was hearing, is that boiling? And then one thing I can guess is maybe this doesn't seal all that great, then you can't expand it. So we're going to get vacuum ramped up, switch the fittings quick, let it suck it all in, and see how it goes. Okay, hopefully that angle's all right. suck a bunch of coolant in. Ooh. Yeah, grab right onto it. Then as it displaces the not air, right, lack of air, 
will kind of fill up and you'll have less and less vacuum on the system. Just gotta make sure to keep keep the tip all the way in. <laughs> yeah. Worst things have been said, get over it. I just saw air come into this hose right here. So it may it's probably at the point where this is too heavy for it to pull any more in. There's two choices. You can put a little more vacuum on it and really go for it, but I can feel fluid in this upper hose and it's still part way collapsed. Get a little more vacuum. It did say some systems will need it twice. But it just starts pulling through it out. Clean it away from the tubes. That's enough to pull more in. I see it burp air back down. This hose again, I mean this is kind of where the vacuum was before. So we're fighting the weight of the coolant in this hose. I wonder if I could go like this. Yep, it's pulling all that in. Let's call that the end of it. We'll see how much is in that reservoir. What fun. Nice, so it's actually, where's my light? It's over full, so good. Did a good job. Uh, I would imagine, because I can hear some air from this upper hose, that we need a ton of air. Yeah, some air. So I bet when this start this up, it'll draw that down a little bit, but yeah, I'm happy so far. Okay, I think everything's in place. I didn't forget to plug something in. Uh, I'll need to prime the fuel. I'm just going to turn the key and leave it. I think it runs like 15 or 20 seconds, the auxiliary pump does in the tank, uh, before it shuts off. So I'll grind through that and then see if it starts. See what kind of funny sounds it makes. Mm -hmm. I've cycled the ignition a few times while messing with the uh, reverse camera that I put in. Don't mind the zip ties. I tried double-sided tape. And it became quite upset. I'm basically mounting it to the half of the rear view mirror mount. Uh, it'll work. It works nice. I adjusted it so I can just barely kind of see the roof line. I can see my trailer hitch, which will be fucking sick when I need to hook a trailer up. And it appears that it shows far enough back that good enough for me, right? Maybe I'll change my mind later. We'll see. Let's give it one more. You can hear the radios. Yeah, shut up. Which is annoying to say. Oh god, that's gonna get annoying. I'll get over it. Uh oh, did I not hook the starter up? Bluetooth mode. Device connected. Or I'm not all the way apart. <laughs> that's Bluetooth it. mode. Device connected. Come on, baby. You know you wanna. There she goes. Okay. Sounds pretty nice already. Is anything spraying out? Didn't really draw much cooling in. I don't hear any injector leaks. Oh, I hear a little tick. Feel any air coming through. Yeah. 
could be any number of things. It could just be normal sound and I'm just paranoid. That's probably what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's idling. Let's check the, uh, see how smooth the exhaust is. Should be nice and steady. Oh yeah, it feels good. Feels like a fucking V12. Uh, 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 uh. Check light, but that's expected when you take stuff apart. So let me grab my scan tool. See what that is. Okay, some of these. So we have short to ground, short to positive on the crank vent heater, which is the I haven't plugged that thing in in ages. So that. Uh, thing might be broken. Might go ahead and unplug that because <laughs> it doesn't turn a light on. Signal from coolant temperature sensor is faulty. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, and rail pressure monitoring. I mean, that could be from startup as well. I'm going to clear all these and just see if anything persists. Alright, temperature's up and down a little bit. That's okay. There might be air pockets even though I use that vacuum thing. I don't have heat yet. So, oh no, there's heat. Got some heat coming out. And I'm so confident in the van running that I brought Harrison along for a pajama party van ride. Uh, I don't think he'll fall asleep and go to bed easy because of it. I think he'll get all riled up because he loves van rides. Uh, what kid doesn't, right? Uh, yeah, anybody that doesn't know, I do take him to daycare in this and I'm a little weirded out. Like I wonder what the other parents think or if someone will call the police on me. But so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah? What are we going to do? We'll go fast and get, get out of here. Go fast and get out of here? Go fast over there? Yeah. Okay, we'll try. Right. Yeah, those are crickets making that sound. So we, we drove for about 45 minutes and uh, no, no problem. So I think we're good to go. We got a little cleanup to do, but at least the van runs. Good news all around. We have a kitty cat's inside. Let's go get her.